So in order to ensure that your recording is successful, it really starts with the planning. So overall, this training is going to be referring to um, sprout and sapling levels. However, there's definitely parts that you can use for seed. Um, but since we do um, the planning during week one of the third class, um, then there are many things that I take into consideration while leading the class. So there are challenges that we definitely face. First, the first challenge is managing multiple groups at the same time um, is difficult. Um, for example, if you have, um, let's say, 12 kids in the class, and let's say that with those 12 kids, you then have three groups. Well, basically what happens is every single group needs your own attention, needs um, your focus for their group. So they're all raising their hands and saying, teacher, can you come and help me? And so managing all of that at the same time is really challenging. A different challenge is that there are varying writing paces. So for example, you'll have one group that writes really, really quickly. And as they write quickly, um, actually their script is almost unusable. Um, it'll generally look like a story, it'll say, um, for example, I don't know, a man walked into a store and another man uh, pulled out a gun and um, the man died and the end. And they'll be like, teacher, I'm finished. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you'll have the group that uh, you go up to them and say, okay, how's it going? And they'll say, oh, teacher, I'm thinking. And you'll say, oh, okay. And then you hurry up. And then you go on and help the next group. And five minutes later, you wander over and check on them. And they still haven't written anything. And they're still telling you, oh, they're thinking. So managing these different writing paces to keep everyone on track to finish their schedule on or finish their script on time um, is really challenging. Another difficulty is the writing style of a script is something they're not used to. You know, in their writing class, they're really learning letters, essays, story, paragraph. Um, so this is a this is a totally different type of writing that they don't really um, have a lesson taught to them on how to do it. And finally, um, sometimes the storyline is confusing. So um, they might have a problem, but they don't have a solution. Or they have a solution, and they don't have a problem. Um, so then it doesn't always make sense. And if it doesn't make sense, then it lowers the quality. And then there are some other factors that I take into consideration. The first thing I always think about is the class's ability. So um, if the class is at the level they should be, so let's say it's a Sprout 1 class, and they their all their English level is at a Sprout One, then you can push them to do um, more difficult scenes. But sometimes you have a class, or when they just level up from seed to Sprout, where they're not quite ready for that level. And so in that case, then I will try to make the script easier for them. Um, the next thing I think about is the class size. So if you have a class of 12, then you need to limit the amount of scenes that you have them write because you will run out of time um, when you record. However, the two better movies that you watched, um, that class was only six kids, so I could really um, push them to write more than just the four scenes. So I added to the script with them. Next thing I think about are the backgrounds. What backgrounds do I have available to me? And we'll get especially uh, more into that. And also I think about the props that are available at the school. So um, if I know that there are props that can work for their movie, then I suggest that they add it into their script. And we'll, again, we'll get more into that. So the solution to all of these factors and um, to all of these difficulties is that you lead students through the script writing one scene at a time. And so now I'll show you a little demonstration of how I would do this during the class. Okay, now we're going to write our scripts for the greeting and the introduction. So everyone, please stay with me only on this part of your script right now. So the reporter will speak first and he or she will say, hello everyone, I'm here in, and you're going to tell me the place 
that you are at. So maybe you're in Korea or Seoul or America, wherever you guys want to have your movie take place. And then next we have newly designed. And now you're going to tell me who this museum is for. So you can say for, and then we're going to say who. Okay, so you are going to have only three minutes to finish this. Go. Okay, great job with that. Everyone's done. So now let's move on to our interview part and let's talk about what types of things we can use to fill in these blanks here. And now we'll move on to talk about those couple factors in a little bit more detail. One of those factors was the different backgrounds that I have available to me. So I want to cover the different options or the different situations that you might run into. So maybe at your school, you have endless options. And by endless options, I mean that you can Google search any image and use that as your background. So if that is the case for you, then you can really push your students to be as creative as possible. Other times you might have a set selection of backgrounds. And that by set selections, selections, I mean, you know, you might have 60 to 100 different um, backgrounds. So um, in that case then, let's say that your students wanted to be really creative, but you absolutely do not have that background. Then I would lead the students to adjusting their script so that it will fit a background that you have. That way it'll make sense. So as an example, um, one time, I've actually worked with all of these different options, but um, when I was working with a set selection, um, my students wanted to write a script that took place in a hospital. Because I didn't have a hospital background. Um, and it was a, a news report, so they were gonna interview a doctor. So what I suggested was that the doctor visit a school and then the students uh, could ask the doctor questions. And um, I just told them that that's because I have a classroom background and they didn't mind at all and they just adjusted their script to that. And then there is the possibility that you may have no backgrounds. And in that case, maybe the, the chroma key system that you used to record with maybe it broke and it's in the process of being fixed. Well, it doesn't mean that you can't make a movie. Um, so what I would do in that case is um, you can, I would just adjust the script so that it would take place in the classroom because you know maybe you might be using a uh, phone to record with or maybe a tablet or something that the school will give you. And um, if you don't have any backgrounds, then adjust the script so you can at least use the classroom as your setting. Um, another thing I would do is I had a blue screen in my room um, that they acted in front of in order to get the different backgrounds. So I would um, maybe tape some fish that we made onto the, the blue screen and we would have the scene take place in the ocean. Or I would tape on some planets that I made and it could happen in the, in the you know, in outer space or Anyways, the point is, is that there are, there are options. You just have to be creative and then have, and have the students and help the students to adjust their script to fit the background options that you have. And then the second factor that we'll talk about are the different props. And there you have all different options. Uh, the first option is that you or students can make different props. Um, so for example, Students love to make movies that use a robot. So actually, um, we made a robot in my school. This isn't one that I made. Um, all I did was I took the A4 paper boxes. Your school will have so many just laying around. And I would tape those boxes together. And I actually made a robot that was like taller than all of the students. And then I just wrapped some aluminum foil around it. And we would you know, pin t-shirts on it or put an apron on it if it was a cleaning robot. And anyways, the students had so much fun and it added a lot of quality to their movie. So um, some props you can absolutely make. 
The other option is that students can bring in a prop, but they'll only bring in props that they want to, that it's fun for them to bring in. So for example, I talked about this in the training, the creative thinking project training with the pet cafe, um, but something like a stuffed animal. Um, if, if your movie would have an animal in it, then ask them to bring some stuffed animals in and they'll love it. Another option, um, this is one of my older classes and this was taking place, it was like a fairy tale. Anyways, um, she um, was the princess and so she brought in her whole outfit. She wanted to dress up and um, so if it's something that they want to, they'll definitely be more than happy to bring it in. And another option is that you could bring it in if this is something that you are open to. Um, so as an example, um, one time my students were making a creative thinking project that took place in the North Pole, except we were recording this in the hot, humid summer. Um, and so students would come to school in shorts and a t-shirt and you know that, that is just not gonna cut it for the North Pole movie. Um, but I couldn't ask students to bring their jackets in because you know mothers put the jackets away um, for that season and so you know, for me, it was really easy. I just keep it in my little, my luggage, and I just pulled out my jackets and my earmuffs and my scarves and my mittens, and I brought it in, and the kids wore it and it turned out so cute, and they really felt like, wow, teacher cares about me, and we have to take this movie seriously. And lastly, you can find items around the school. Um, this is actually uh, one of the sapling creative thinking projects. Um, it was a talk show. And I think at this time, my recording, my chroma key system was broken. Um, so I just created a set and I would drag in these random plants that we found around the school. And we had this bench that was in the hallway. And, and I can remember my director saying like, what are you doing? But um, <laughs> I like, you dragged everything in the room. Um, but you know, once he saw the quality of the movie, he thought, well, I guess, drag whatever in that you need then, Megan. But they really liked it and had a lot of fun with it. And the last thing that you have to think about during your planning week is how you're going to help students to memorize. Um, so I generally follow this schedule here. So during week one, the planning week, um, after students finish writing their script, I keep the script. I don't let them take it home because what happens is the mothers clean out the students' bags. And when they clean it out, they lose their script. And if you don't have a script, then there's no chance of making the movie the next week. So I keep the scripts and then I make a copy before week two begins. I make copies for them and I make a copy for myself so everybody um, is sure to have a copy. Then when week two comes, the first day I see them, I return the script to them. And then all throughout the week, I start reminding them over and over, memorize, memorize, memorize. Um, and then by the time that the time to record, then they're generally as ready as they can be.